throw them out. So I, I just want you to be on an alert to receive whatever portion that is relevant to you. And then I'm going to talk about Romans chapter 8. When the Lord gave me Romans chapter 8 in Kansas City, when I prayed for this gathering, I didn't quite understand until when I was sitting there worshipping. So I knew that Romans 8 is verse 18 to 39 is the exposition that we have to look at in the scripture today. But I didn't understand the prophetic significance until just now. So I'm going to start off by talking to you like this for about 30, 45 minutes. We may pause to pray when the Lord is emphasizing something that we need to come into agreement together because this is the opening session. I think what we're doing is we are framing the paradigm. We're framing the prophetic conversation, the prophetic imperative right now in this place. So Lord, we thank you again for the presence of your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth that will guide us into all truth, yeah. not just generic truth, but the truth that is needed now at this Kairos moment for the nations that are gathered here and the nation that is to be added to this global watch. Not just nations, but cities. Not yes. just cities, Come but on. communities, Lord. Yeah. Father, we just want to say thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this is the context of which I came from in Kansas City uh, the last few days. Is we had a three-day fast from September 10th to 12th. We have a three-day global bridegroom fast every month. So, that is not news. But the news is we move our global bridegroom fast from the first Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to September 10 to 12, a week later, because we discern that we are in a window of time as a 24-7 prayer ministry, a very unique window of time. September 10, as you know, in the Jewish calendar, the Hebraic calendar is the Feast of the Trumpet, which is the beginning of the Jewish New Year. But what is more important was that 19 years ago in 1999, when God sent us a flood of intercessors, I'm literally talking about a flood of intercessors. Uh, I have started in May, on May 7, 1999. But we only could do 13 hours of prayer a day. We could not do 24-7. I wasn't there. I came about two and a half years after I have started. And so what happened was that, um, so the people kept, the fire on the altar faithfully for 13 hours for several months. But over the summer, between July and August, somehow the Holy Spirit was magnifying that little work in the trailer in Kansas City and I think over a hundred intercessors from all over America and other nations show up. And there's enough people to do 24-7 prayer. So they just decided on September 19, 1999, it's going to be a prayer meeting that will never stop again. In other words, the switches were never needed to be turned off, the, key, the door were never needed to be locked. That is one prayer meeting that we will never need to end. So by the grace of God, okay, that was 19 years ago. I mean, it is obviously a declaration of faith. You know, no, I mean, in recent history, the last 24-7 prayer that went on for 100 years happened right here. And then, then Korean prayer mountain has some 24-7 prayer. I don't know, probably for 50, 60 years. I don't know whether it stopped or didn't stop. I don't know what happened. I don't have the details. But to, to, to say that we never need to close the door again is a declaration of faith, especially in America. Amen. Believe me. Okay? <laughs> Now, we're talking about a Western culture which is not particularly very strong in prayer. Okay. You know, we're not the East African, we're not the Korean, and we... Yeah, there's a declaration of faith. September 19, 1999. And so, during the first day of the prayer, someone came to Mike Bickle and said, Today is Yom Kippur. And uh, did you know that today is the Day of Atonement? That was 19 years ago. The, the alignment of September 19 was around the Day of Atonement. 19 years later right now, which is on Wednesday, September 19, the cycle is coming back. It's going to be Yom Kippur again. So our, our 19th anniversary in 2019, 19 years later, there is a prophet, prophetic cycle that has returned. And... Um, so I come from that context, and not only that, that um, I will, the reason why I'm not staying all the way to the end with you is because suddenly in the month of April, we receive a call from some 
Some of you may know David Damien. He does a lot of global gathering. He's bringing about 1,000 Chinese leaders from all across the world to join with the IHOP story on our 19th anniversary. So I am going to get on a plane and hopefully get to the first service. Try to cheat some time, okay? So uh, the point is this, there is a lot that is happening on a global scale, even though, like she said, this is an international ministry with a local expression, a local emphasis. You have better words than me. But there's a local global thing, but because you named the ministry Global Watch, I want you to connect to the prophetic window we're at in terms of a global prayer movement. Something significant is happening. I want to throw in at least three stream, three prophetic stream into this storyline right now, which is relevant to us. It might to some country, some region, some nation, it might be more relevant. To others, it might be less now, but God is speaking to you ahead of time. So I'm just throwing it out there for you to catch it. The first principle that I discern is found in Revelation 7.3. I call that the season and the window of reprieve. A window of reprieve is a picture where the, there is rightful time when the judgment of God would roll in. In Revelation 7, there was this holding back of the four winds by four angels because more time is needed to seal the 144,000. So the principle is this, there is a holding back of something, some cataclysmic reality shaking that God wants to release, but God is holding it back for a peace time for something to go through, something to be completed. So there is a season of reprieve given to some nation and some cities and some places. America is in one of those seasons of reprieve. And I believe some nations are in that same cycle. So this is the first prophetic stream that is very important for us as watchmen to understand. That window is not going to stay there forever. Because the Lord is ordaining the holding back of something so that the work of God will go through during that period of time. So the the word picture that is very clear is Revelation 7.3 where the the holding back of the four winds and sealing of the 144,000. I'm not referring to that, uh, the book of Revelation interpretation. I'm using that as a word picture to demonstrate to you the principle of reprieve. Are you tracking? Second one is Joshua 10.10. Now this is very getting very interesting for me. I have to admit that I haven't read Joshua 10.10 for almost two years now. I mean, I'm in the book of Ezekiel right now. We're all in the book of Ezekiel in Kansas City. But Joshua 10.10 is a very familiar story of the sun stood still because of intercession. There is a... The, it, it sounds like a reprieve, but it's not exactly the same, okay? Reprieve is a holding back of judgment to create a window for the purpose of God to be completed before the tidal wave, whatever that God wants to accomplish, roll in in terms of the negative consequences towards darkness and all that. Whereas Joshua 10.10 is about stretching time that is supposed to be fixed by the law of physics, you know, but but the sun stood still, the moon stood still because of an intercession of a man called Joshua. Joshua 10.10 to Joshua 10.13, okay? And so, and the scripture says this very clearly in verse 12 and 13, it says, Never happened before at the request and the word of a human being. Heaven would answer that way. That the celestial body will will come into a freezing moment in order for an earthly event of the purposes of God to have sufficient time to, to accomplish. So it sounded like both had to do with time, but they are different. One is the holding back of the negative in order for a period of like the eye of the storm to accomplish what God is. The other one is stretching of the time for a very positive breakthrough event to finish because the event is already happening. There's not enough time to finish it. So the intercessors say, God, give me more time. And then God gave more time. Actually, it's the same time, but the time is stretched. I don't even know how to do the math. But you know, it's the same 24 hours is just the sun stood still and they finished the conquest. They defeated the Amorites. So 
I, I don't know what to call this. I call it the principle of sufficiency of the time to finish whatever God is calling you to do. And uh, some of you felt the urgency in your heart for your nations, for your ministry, for your assignment. And I want to say to you that God is going to give you enough time, even though it looks like it is not enough time. Come on. But as an intercessor, it is we have in our spirit the ability to ask to join with heaven in this partnership. Am I going too fast? No. Okay, great. Because there's so many nations here, we all talk in different speed. <laughs> <laughs> the third stream, that I, I think they're all woven into one, it's almost like a threefold cords uh, that's woven into one. The third one is what she mentioned, surprise. The suddenly of God within a determined kairos is the Acts chapter 2 verse 2 reality of suddenly that comes the mighty rushing wind. The word suddenly or surprise is actually no surprise because Jesus told them it will come. Yeah. It will wait. In other words, there is a prophetic <clears throat> promise that God will do it. However, the precise calibration of the time, especially for those who have been faithful in waiting and praying, seems like hard to discern. So to them, it's a suddenly it came on a day they don't actually expect. Amen. But they know it's going to happen because God promised it. So there is an appointed time for it. It's just like this. Even Elijah knew that when he prophesied there was no rain because of sin of Israel, when he, he caused Israel to re, re, return to God in, in 1 Kings 17 to 20, the, the chapter when the false prophet was killed and Israel turned back to God, he knew the rain, the drought is only going to be for three and a half years. He said it out of his mouth. He knew the time. But there was no cloud in the sky. There was no cloud in the sky. Amen. So that what seems to be a delay actually is a moment of surprise is a moment of suddenly. And I, I believe that I am sensing this, just as Sue have said, mentioned just now, is God's way of being poetic with us. And as intercessors, we need to exercise our muscles yes. and in learning how to calibrate our intercession based on this suddenly of God. In other words, we need to have a... Uh, patience and the perseverance at the same time. Some of you, you say, I know perseverance. I've been doing this for 30 years. Okay. So, yeah. But then the suddenly of God would come in the midst of all this. With that, I will segue into something that I don't really know in the natural. Some part that I know in the natural. I saw the number 1010 happening a few times. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to highlight one more that is in Joppa, Acts chapter 10, verse 10, where Peter went up to the rooftop and prayed. And you know the story about Cornelius sending the, the servants, the three servants to come. And, and, and uh, Peter was in a trance where he saw those unclean animals coming down in blankets and the Lord commanded him to kill and eat. So why am I mentioning this? This is Acts 10, 10. And Peter was on the house, in the house, on the rooftop of Simon the Tanner. And, uh, you know, according to, I think, the more kosher custom, the person who worked as a tanner is not the most welcome people within the hierarchy of social class within the Jewish community. But the presence of the Lord was strong in the house of the tanner. Because Peter was praying and fasting up there. And then you have Paul in Acts chapter 9, slightly earlier, when he was on the, on the road to Damascus, and you, he encountered the Lord, and the scripture says in chapter 9, verse 11, 9, 1, 1, you like that very much? <laughs> no, very important, right? Amen, amen. Chapter 9, verse 11, and God makes sure that, uh, you know, it is marked, it is marked that way, that that he has to be ushered into the house of Simon. And in the house of Simon, he didn't eat for three days. He was on, what you call it, the Esther fast, where he didn't drink and eat for three days. And the Lord talked to Ananias 
about Paul in the state of prayer and connected them in the spirit. So these two story, the Simon and the, the, the Simon the Tanner and Simon of Damascus, both have the same name. Maybe it's the most common name in, in the Middle East during that time. There's just so many Simon. And then one is in Joba, one is in Damascus, and both of them has a prophetic setup. And both of them happen in very unlikely, non-sacred places. What is the principle that the Lord is highlighting to me? Okay, I don't remember me declaring this anymore, anywhere else, so I'm framing the sentence. Um, let me read what I wrote here in the sentence to you, because I want to craft the word more accurately. It says this, When you pray... You turn that place and that time into a chamber of encounter. So in other words, even though we come here to dig a well, to redig this well, to allow the seed to germinate, the reason why this place became special, even though it is in the middle of nowhere, I mean, it's not actually in the middle of nowhere, God look at this place in a very significant way, because several hundred years ago, there was a company of people that turned this place into a chamber of intimacy. Amen. So wherever the Lord is assigning you, whether it's the rooftop of Simon the Tanner or the house of Simon the Damascus, Come on. the moment the intercessors begin to set foot and begin to open up their hearts and their mouth, that place is transformed into an altar and a place of intimacy where divine setup is aligned. All right. So I want to say to you, as a global watch contingent all over the world, we are not only watchmen, we are altars builders. Wow. We, wherever the Lord set us, some of you have assignment a few years here, here a few years there, some of you are thinking, you know, I don't know whether I'm done with this place. You know, I've, Build this house, this prayer place, but it looks like timing is up, I'm moving, I don't know, you know, I'm struggling. You bring the altar of the Lord. You are that place. The moment you set a place, even in the most unlikely place, the people say the place not so clean, you know, it doesn't have a lot of history. That place, that time, not only the place, the time become the chamber of encounter. Come on. So the fact that we chose to gather right now, September 16 to September 21, 2019, we have again re-emphasized the fact that we want to meet the Lord right here now. So when I was doing this, Acts 10, 10 came along and Joshua 10, 10 to 13 came along. So I began to have a dialogue with the Lord. Right there in the chairs. God, what are you doing with this 10 10 thing? Then he says, Look at your own life. I have two things that cross a significant 10 year mark this year. I'm not going to highlight that because it's personal, but I'm alerted. There are two 10s that's right in front of my eyes that are very important right now. One I privately mentioned to them, you know, and uh, so I said, God, wow, this is important. Then Sue stood up just now and said, I've been living in Germany for 10 years. Okay, okay, and then I, I heard the, almost like an invitation, but with some kind of a sobriety to Fred and Sue, that there are prayers, there are probably more tens before the Sue, Sue William tens, there were tens before the tens and the tens and then Sue William tens, and then the ten come to a place where reinforcement is now needed, and God is sending nations to come to this place for the next 10. So come this on. assignment that you guys are taking on, you have to seriously count the cost. It is not a one, two year run. You know, it's the great sobriety. I'm really challenging you to think in terms of a 10 year run. That's actually started about last year when yeah. you came. Yeah. And so, and if you calibrate that 10 years, it will, it will reach the time of 2027. 300. The 300 year. Ooh. I think God has a 10 year plan yes. in place to unfold certain things, to join the nation back to this wow. well in some way. Wow. I, like I said, I know in part, I know a little bit. When I declare it out there, some of you are saying, 
I understood it. So if you understood it, you better share. Okay? So the next three, four days, go pray, extrapolate, expand, ask the Holy Spirit, and let's build on this storyline and what the Lord is saying and doing. Yeah, I feel the stillness of the Lord. Let's just wait upon the Lord for a while. Psalms 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I shall be exalted over the nations. I just felt that I just want to open up. No problem, no problem. Oh! This is either an angelic situation or the law of physics called balance. But whatever it is, it is not neutral. Because Newton says something that is not moving without additional force, it shouldn't move. Unless Newton is wrong. Some of you are better physics people than me. So let's just go back into stillness. If this thing fall again, I'm really gonna believe that's an angel <laughs> right here. I'm gonna hold this. <laughs> so I uh, I don't know you you flip the pages for me or what? Okay. It's on X10, then I'm staring at it right now in front of me. Come on. So I'm not supposed to move, I guess. I mean, the Bible was completely on the floor, random. She picked it up and put it back right here and it's back to that page. Okay. I just want a few of you, if you feel stirred, just, just stand up. Let's do First Corinthians 12, one by one. Pray in your own language, but don't pray too long, about a minute. What the Lord is stirring in your heart about what you hear and declare it. I will close when I feel the time is right. Let's just respond. No pressure. Whatever language that the Lord give you, this is a, a moment of talking to the Lord, just like Joshua. Let our voice be heard on high. If someone else stand up at the same time with you, just prefer one another. Everyone take turns. Okay, so Daniel, I just want to—I just want to respond. Respond to what you're saying uh, prophetically. I just want to say this. Susan, stand up. Stand up. I just want to say that um, this is the Lord calling us to make a ten-year commitment. I just want to say, Lord, not your will, but not my will, but your will be done. And we stand ready to. To, to do that. We stand ready to be obedient in that. Whatever it takes, Lord, whatever you want in that. It's our privilege to do it. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Your grace be sufficient for those that say yes. Lord, we ask you, there are still nations that are not joined to this. We call them forth right now. We call them forth. Daniel, I, I want to say this to people here to verify this as the word of the Lord. Um, but in praying into this gathering, the Lord said, prepare. Prepare for 2027. Mm-hmm. movement and prayer movement it cannot separate mm. it's a 10 10 mm. yeah. thank you sister would you pray in korean or in english whatever language what you just said just now would you just pray we will agree with you yes father yes father 하나님 이곳에 자원하여서 전심으로 주님 자신의 전 삶을 들여서 하나님 정말 그 미전도 종족에게 복음이 전해졌던 선교사가 파송되어졌던 하나님 이 음물 안에 우리가 왔습니다. 하나님 교회가 교회 되게 하시고 예 기도의 집이 기도의 집이 되게 하시고 하나님 정말 이제 마지막 남은 이 비전들을 어떤 특정한 하나님 어떤 단체나 어떤 특정한 기도하는 사람들이 하는 것이 아니라 하나님 교회라고 불림을 받은 에클레시아가 하나님 그대로 이 삶을 살아갈 수 있도록 하여 주십시오. 하나님 이곳에 모인 우리 모두가 열방에서 온 우리 모두가 하나님 이 비전을 우리가 취합니다. 지금 이루십시오. 
from to you, Jesus, no longer looking behind the sword. Yes. By your grace and by your spirit, mm. we will do it. In Jesus' name. Yes, thank yes. you. Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you would pour out the spirit of prayer and supplication in the church in Paris, yes. in the country, in Germany, and in Europe. Father. Yes. Yes, God. Yeah. We pray that churches would be prayer houses, Lord. Yes. Father, people would pray. Father, instead of doing programs mm -hmm. or, or activities where the Holy Spirit and we have to be present. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Lord, we pray for the spirit of prayer and supplication to be poured yes, out over Europe, yes. over, over the church, over the body of Christ. Yes. How that people want to pray, mm -hmm. that it wouldn't be a big act to get people together for prayer, but that it would be easy, Lord, that people want to pray. Jesus. Yes, pour out your spirit of prayer right here, Lord. Right in this town, once again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Once again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we cry. Out. Yes, Lord. Once yes, Lord. Again. Yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. Let the fame of your name again be yes, Lord. from her heart, Germany. Yes, Lord. Lord, but Lord, don't skip over German, German Come speaking on. world. That's right. That is spread, Lord, all throughout the German speaking world, but touch it. As our sister cry out to you, God. Yes, Lord. Lord. 10,000 intercessors in Germany alone. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. We cry out to you. We are yes, here Lord. in yes, Germany. Lord. So we stand again. Yes, Lord. We ask you just in Germany alone. Yes, Lord. Those that will cry out to you in German language. Yes, 10,000, Lord, intercessors, watchmen on the wall that will not hold their peace day come and on. night. Father, yes, we Lord. ask you, release this grace. Lord, thank you. Oh, Rabu Kamasan. 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 Oh, Yes, yes we call for the remnant of Israel. Yes, Yato Kamosel, Ote, Latu Kumasan, Ye Latu Kumasan, Excuse me a minute. Let me just um. I, I'm just going to have them uh, have the microphone so everybody can hear. Oh, Rabbi, come back. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's continue to agree with what the Lord is stirring in our hearts. I don't think the Lord is done yet. So much. Okay, so so that um, the Lord answering or responding to Peter's prayer was because of Cornelius' prayer. Yes. yes. And the Lord responding to the prayer of Paul after his conversion was a response to the believers who had been praying yes. because of this man. Yes. So it's all involved with prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Lord, we ask for prayer that give birth to more prayer. Lord, we ask you. Lord, if 19 years of day and night, 24-7 prayer in Kansas City, Lord Jesus, we pray for this 21st century prayer movement that is global in nature. Lord, we ask you, prayer that has ascended from different parts of the world, including Kansas City, will give birth to so much more prayers everywhere. It will be easier and easier for people to say yes and enter in. Not only, Lord, the intercession movement for Israel, but even the global night watch movement. Lord, there's something that is most difficult for human beings Lord, to watch through the night, Lord, because prayer is giving birth to more prayer, in answer to prayer, Lord, we ask you that those that are stepping in, Lord, for the next 20 years will find significant more grace to do this. In the name of Jesus, even the young ones, even the children, Lord, you have done it in this place with a 9-year-old, 11-year-old, Lord, would you do this? They pray through the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Lord, once again, a worship and a prayer movement with much grace, O oh Lord, all over the world. But in this place, Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Lord, there is a silent curfew that goes from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning in this town. Father, Lord, we ask you to turn that into a sacred time of prayer. We ask you, every home, every house, Lord, that no distraction, no other noise, except for the rumbling and the silent meditation of those people that look up to your throne. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, together with my brothers and sisters here, Lord. Oh, Father, Lord, we just thank you. Oh, Roba Just when the date 2027 was mentioned, I had a sense of voices crying in anguish, how long, O oh Lord? And it was the, the voices of, as if the unreached people groups who have not yet heard the gospel after mm. 2,000 years, saying, mm. how long before the gospel comes to us? Father, we ask you that for some of these unreached, unengaged people group that do not even have significant number of believers that the first fruit of their remnant will be here in Hernwood, Germany before 2027. We are not just asking for them to have the first fruit of the believers. We are asking you to raise up the first fruit of the praying church that will be part of this global watch movement and they will be represented right here in this place. Right here, oh Lord, in Jesus' house. Father Lord, we are asking you to gather in unity today. Lord, just as the group of young people in Kansas City 1999 have no idea how they can sustain 24-7 prayer, but they declare by faith, Today, Lord, we pray in agreement for this unreached, unengaged people group, Lord Jesus, that is still out there who is not yet been penetrated by the gospel. Not only they will receive the Holy Spirit breakthrough, but the first fruit of the saints will come forth and stand on the watchman wall. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I just sense a, a, a new level and a new standard concerning this this 10-year period i felt the lord say i'm i'm, I'm going to be granting tenure the sense of this this permanent permanency yes. of a new standard i just want to oh, pray right. into that that i i felt like there's going to be posts that are that are going to be established around the earth and there's going to be this 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 enabling grace to stand in this way past the 10 years but there's going to be a granting of, of a tenured companies throughout the earth. So Father, yes. Father, we ask for a, for for a, an ability and an enabling yes. grace to say yes. yes. Come on. Father, yes. plans on the earth, Father oh, God. Oh yes. As you're raising watchmen oh, companies, yes. Father God, in a spirit yes. of excellence, yes. Father God. Yes. And Lord, there are going to be uh, chief minstrels that are going to be.
be tenured, Father God, yes. in your house throughout the earth. Yes. They're going to be chief minstrels that are going to read, be able to, to interpret the global song of the Lord on the earth. And there's going to be intercession, Father God, that's going to go forth, Lord. So we stand together, Father God, and say, do it, Father God. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. soit faite selon ta volonté. Et Seigneur, au nom de mon pays, je veux dire oui à ce que tu es en train de, de déclarer. healing of the body of Christ because uh, the Hunwood prayer movement is a result of a healed community that stand together miraculously for such a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I just thank you, God, right now that we are all called here, not by chance. We've been handpicked by you. We've been chosen. I thank you, God, that in this time where we may have felt dry and your people have felt dry and and those out there in the world that felt dry, they're running after those things that are not of you to feel fulfilled, to feel renewed, to feel strengthened. Father God, I pray that you would come right now by your Holy Spirit and you would move on those peoples within this room, within this community, within this country, within the nations and with the whole world globally, Father God, that you would come and your power will fall and your healing will come and you will heal the nations. Father God, I thank you that uh, yesterday while I was on the on the plane, you showed me a green leaf as I was just writing out what you showed me. Then, then that green leaf turned into a flame. And I thank you, Father God, that your healing of the nations. I'm from Canada. That's what our maple leaf represents. It's a healing of the nations. That, Father God, you, Jesus, are the healer of the nations. And you're going to come and you're going to fall with your fire, with your power, with yes. your might. And there is going to be a move of healing across this land, yes. across this world that we have not seen yet. Yes. So the Lord, I believe, would say right now, prepare, prepare, prepare. Prepare. Yes. Get ready. I am coming in a way that you have not seen me. I am coming by power, by fire, by might. And I am going to heal this land with my son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price for the healing for one and for all. In the name of Jesus. Sorry. Um, amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to close. Because I still want to give you my exposition of Romans 8 in 10 minutes. 
Yes, one more person want to pray? Okay. Yes. I would like to respond to um, what I just prayed. Um, I heard the Lord says, um, Seal for the house will eat me up. And when he was he was in the temple, when he was in the temple the first time, he was so burned up that with the passion that he wants to build a house of the praise of for the nation. And he wants he wants to have a new new start of a new beginning in the body of Christ. And he wants to release, have a, have a certain divine circumcision in our heart that, so that we can become a spotless bride. And we will be, we will be so ready. And before he was ascended, he, he told more than 500 people or even more, way more that we should, uh, we should wait in Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Spirit, wait for the seed of the kingdom to release. And after 10 days, only 120 waited in the, in the upper house, in the upper, in the upper room. And we, a lot of call, so many were called and few were chosen. Lord, give us faithful, give us the faithfulness of yours that so that we can be faithful. And we can, we will, we will clean such, we will, we will, we will prepare ourselves, we will get ourselves get ready for you to release, release your power, release your kingdom, and your kingdom to, to come upon and on, to the all nations, to all nations, because we have been cried out for years and years, and your, your kingdom is not by word, but by power. We listen, we listen, see that into, into our heart, and so that we will become in oneness for your kingdom to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.